Hello and welcome to my short lecture about skydiving. I'm a physicist. I hold a PhD in theoretical physics with gravitational physics as my research field. So this is basically something that I love very much and it's natural. It's very natural for me to talk about. All right, you look at these pictures. These are the three different people. This man is my good friend Ben. This is myself. We are in free fall in the air, but we are moving differently. He's moving faster than I'm moving. And uh, there's an explanation why. The man you see right here with the thumb up is Mr. Hendrik Reimer, the Swedish and world champion in uh, speed skydiving. And I'll be talking a little bit about it, what it's all about. I'm not going to focus on speed skydiving, basically. Uh, I'm going to be just talking about skydiving. But it's uh, very related to this because the part that I'm going to talk about today is a free fall part of skydiving. So I'm not going to talk about the parachute flying, what happens when the parachute opens and all that. I'm just going to focus from when the jumper parachute is leave an airplane. Usually a door, an exit is at the back behind wings. Uh, rarely it, they jump right here, but it can happen. Helicopter we're not going to talk about very much because um, we jump from 4,000 meters. So most people don't fly a helicopter to 4,000 meters just to jump because it's going to be quite impractical and usually expensive for most civil skydivers. All right, physical skydiving uh, is going to involve mathematics. So if you don't like mathematics, you can forget about it. You can listen to this again. Uh, Hendrik, world champion, married. I have 700 jumps. Hendrik, maybe a few thousand. Ben has over a thousand jumps. We do different things in the sky, and Ben is doing something which I'm going to talk about and related to Henrik's specialty in uh, skydiving, ne? namely that he knows how to fall very fast. All right, how to fall very fast. In physics, uh, you have to think about forces that act upon something, and usually we take point particle uh, to describe a lot of things. So if you have a skydiving in the free fall, whether um, he or she is in the belly position, like this, um, panda, come on, yes, arching like this, or head down, and just showing the face, waving to you, or like this, and many of them can do a lot of things in the free fall, even stand and do a lot of oh, cool things. I'm usually just uh, flying down on my belly, so I look mostly like this. All right, now that you have seen a panda, we're going to look at when the head is down, and you're probably going to fall very fast. And that's an explanation and description of how fast it can be, and how it's going to work, and how you can achieve that. All right, so let me just move on. In physics, you have to treat this person as a point particle. And as of uh, the current situation, you have only two forces. One is the force of gravity that pulls you down. And that happens uh, on the Earth, uh, everywhere in the solar system, uh, all, all, on all planets. The force upward here exists only on certain places. The moon is totally vacuum-like, so there's no chance that you're going to get this on the moon. If you jump, uh, one good thing about jumping on the moon is that if you jump from about three meters, you're not going to break your leg because you're not going to hit the, the ground, the moon surface very hard. Of course, if you would jump from two kilometers on the moon, it's going to be very bad because you don't have any way to slow down unless you have a jet engine, right? But we're not going to focus on the moon right now. We're going to focus on this. So we are on Earth. We have the force of uh, the atmospheric friction, which is basically the air resistance. And the air resistance is a, some kind of force when you consider in physics. So we have two forces. And we are considering uh, a mo motion in this direction. So we have to write down an equation with help of Newton's uh, second law. And that is F equal ma. And now, if you don't know so much about math, you can jump this and come back in the next 10 minutes. Or just, you know, um, um, go to the end of this video, basically, to look at the final equation. So F equal ma. Um, we're going to consider um, this situation with help of uh, x, y, and z coordinates. But we only focus in uh, two direct, uh, one direction right now. So we're going to consider this in the y direction. So I can write this as m 
y double dot, where y double dot means second derivative of y with respect to time derivative um, to the power of 2. Um, this is an expression. Uh, we're going to try to use this to describe. So the motion is in the, this direction. So we write down m y dot or m d, the second derivative of y with respect to time. And that's the acceleration, right? According to Newton's second law, this will be um, the force of gravity, um, which is in the same direction as the direction we're considering, um, minus the air resistance. The form, uh, formula for air resistance is a little bit complicated. It's given by F air equals um, K V squared. K is a constant that combines a lot of things, and the constant that um, involves um, many parameters, and it looks like this. Um, rho C D A divided by 2. So this is basically K. I'm going to use a value of K that I have uh, estimated to be in the range of 10 to the power of minus 2. This is because it is um, it's very difficult to take for the first. Um, <laughs> that rho is not a constant, it's an add density, not even the CD. CD is a drag coefficient, skydiver change their um, body most of the time. So if you want to fall steadily, you have to use, um, you have to be in the position that you don't move. You have to stay still. And A is the area of contact with the air. So that's also a problem um, in general. If you don't uh, want to have um, F that varies with, um, with your, your projectile or your, uh, your trajectory, sorry, then you have to be very sure that all these constants stay constant. And again, this thing is something that you achieve uh, first when you reach the terminal velocity. Until then, a lot of things happen. You're going to accelerate a lot. All right, um, so I'm going to write down mg minus k v squared, and this is m d. Um, you can also write it at dv dt, derivative of velocity with respect to time. And you want to, for sure, simplify this. That will be g minus k v squared divided by m. This is how you use algebra to simplify. So we basically want to solve this equation. But I don't want uh, has, um, velocity as a function of time. No, I'm not interested in this. I'm interested in velocity as a function of uh, distance. So what I have to do is to do some math, and this is going to be interesting. And now I have to remove a picture of my friend, uh, right? And we'll deal with this later on. Okay. So you have the equation. M d v d t. No, m doesn't exist anymore. Um, Solve in the third term. So you want to have dv. Um, you want to solve v. So you need, you need dv somewhere. And it shows that um, if you actually write dv dt with the help of chain rule, you're going to be able to get dv dy dy dt. So you see that you have dv left. And it means that you can write down the equation here differently as dv dy. And dy dt is basically the velocity minus g k v square divided by m. So now you want to have dv alone um, in the left-hand side. So what you do is basically, sorry, uh, you want to, to have dv v dv in the left-hand side. You just have to multiply um, dy on both sides. And then you're going to have v dv divided by g minus k v square divided by m equals dy. Sorry, this is dv. To integrate this, it's quite complicated because you have a v square. So we use some trick. And this trick is something which is very standard in mathematics. You just define um, u as v square, which is going to lead you to um, du being 2v dv. Then you can use this result uh, over here. V dv would be du divided by 2, and you still have g minus k. V square be, uh, become u, and this will be dy. What you have to do is to integrate. And if you know uh, calculus, 
this is not too difficult, right? Just to integrate. It's not even a uh, complicated differential equation. Just to integrate this, you're going to get um, a, a natural log derivative of g minus ku divided by m, and number two still remains as it is a constant. And k and m going to come out in a nice way to m minus k with minus sign. This will be y plus a constant. A constant here can be determined. As you know that v is 0 when y is 0. The moment the skydiver leaves an airplane, it still uh, so that the velocity is 0. So you don't have any, any velocity when um, displacement is 0 or distance is 0. So putting this in over here, um, and remember that v and u are basically the same thing. So you can put that in, you're going to get y being, uh, let's do it. I don't remember the result, so that will be logarithm of g minus, uh, this is an absolute value, 0. So log g being, this is 0. Yes, c is going to be basically this, and you have to write it down. So I'm going to use this result right here in order to get uh, to the next step. That would be minus 2m divided by k log of uh, g minus ku. And now I change this to a per. <clears throat> the usual parenthesis, um, you don't need absolute value because you don't expect anything strange to happen here. It would be y uh, minus 2m divided by k log g. Uh, let's rearrange this equation somewhat. You're going to get um, y equals minus 2m divided by k log g minus ku divided by m. And that would be um, something that is uh, plus 2mk log g. Um, we can rearrange a little bit, um, so you're going to get a better result. Um, let me do it again here. It's getting a little bit messy. So c is basically um, this uh, result, and I would like to have uh, um, everything put together in a nice way. So I uh, rearrange. So y is going to become, uh, I pull out 2m divided by k. I'm going to have uh, log g minus ku divided by m minus uh, log g. That's just something that you can do through um, factorization. So y now is going to be this. And now you use the, um, the result or a rule from logarithm that you're going to have. Um, natural log of x minus natural log of e, y being natural log of x divided by y. So this thing is going to be simplified toward this expression or this equation. So y is going to be uh, minus 2mk log g minus ku divided by m minus divided by g. And then you just have to simplify again using algebra. Algebra is going to help you get this thing nicely. Ku uh, mg. Now that you have y uh, as a function of u, the other parameters, they are constants. So all you have to do is to uh, put back the v squared. So now you have um, a function uh, uh, distance y as a function of v squared. But of course, that's not what we're interested in. We are interested in v, so we have to solve this somewhat. So I rearrange this again as a uh, k comma y divided by 2m with the negative being a log of 1 minus k v square divided by mg. And now you can, uh, as you do in mathematics, you want to get rid of the log, uh, the log function here. You just have to, uh, having e, have e, the natural numbers, uh, being 2.17, 8, and so on, uh, as a base. And you're going to get out this thing, e to the power of minus ky divided by 2m equal 1 minus kv square divided by mg. Rearranging this will give you a kv square divided by, two, by, divided by mg being 1 minus e to the power of minus ky divided by 2m. And you want to have v square, that would be mg divided by k multiplied by this. I hope you still see it. Um, 
So uh, let me move on here. So the velocity function now is still a square function, a quadratic function, but uh, soon we're going to be finished with this derivation. So as you can see, we have to take a square root, and that's all. We don't expect any negative value here, right? Because we're interested only in the speed, not the red direction. So that is something that is uh, going to work out fine for us. So this is basically a speed as a function of uh, displacements or a function of altitude. So a skydive, skydiver uh, falling toward the Earth, uh, the center of the Earth, he's going to be stopped or she's going to be stopped by the surface. If he or he is not going to go right down, that's not a good idea. You always have to pull your parachute, even in, in, uh, you know, in all kinds of jumping, you pull your parachute. Otherwise, the, the uh, AAD, the automatic activation device, will do it for you. That's another story. I'm not going to go into that right now. So you have this thing, but we're only interested in when we're going to reach um, the uh, um, terminal velocity. So if we plot this, we're going to get v, y, and the terminal velocity is here. This function usually looks like this. Um, and you can actually uh, do it carefully. By doing it carefully, uh, you'll be able to see when um, the velocity reaches the terminal velocity. And if we put that in here by using um, a limit in mathematics of v, uh, when y go to infinity, y doesn't even have to, to go to far infinity. I mean, it's actually going to reach a um, certain value. Uh, so I can call it y t terminal. Um, this thing is going to reach mg divided by k. And remember now that k that we talk about um, is this um, function. So if I put back this constant, I'm going to get 2mg divided by rho cda. Um, this complicated term goes away. It becomes uh, uh, 0 here due to this. So it's only a mg divided by k multiplies by 1. So you get this thing. And this analysis um, is a very good one because um, you reach this thing, or kv square, in the terminal velocity domain. So basically, you're going to get this anyway. But my derivation here shows uh, that it takes um, some time, namely that when a parachute is jumped, this small panda, Either he's in the belly, head down, head up, uh, black back flip, whatever, spin. But hopefully you're not spinning too much. You're not going to feel so good. But let's say you stay still like this or like this. It takes some time. But after a while, you're going to reach terminal velocity. And the terminal velocity is going to be uh, basically 2 times mg divided by rho, cd, and a. Rho is the air density. Cd is your form, as you like. And A is the area of contact, how much you meet the air, basically. So the smaller, the better, right? Like the head down. And uh, 2mg, you can't change so much, although they're not constants. Mass of a skydiver can change. If he spit out something, or he suck in more air, or he pees in the sky, hopefully nobody does that. Uh, G uh, is the uh, Earth um, acceleration due to gravity. So this is usually 9.8, and it doesn't change very much. Although it changes anyway, so it's wrong if somebody tells you that it's a constant. So none of these uh, can stay constant, really. But we, rem we remain interested only in the denominator here. So we have to make sure that uh, CD and A are as small as possible. And a good speed skydiver, namely skydiver that like to fall like this down to reach a speed during competition or during training, uh, would like to hold his or her position as, as well as possible. Anyway, I'm not going to analyze more how they do it. That's uh, something I left for you to talk to the experts, like Mr. Henry Reimer and my good friend Ben, because he usually likes to be hitting down when he jumps, right? I like me, who like to do like this. All right, that's it for now from me. Let me go and uh, sleep a little bit, and I will think about skydiving when I wake up again. <laughs>